Excerpt is entering a new level of development. How much money do you think this will bring to investors? Write answers in the comments. Participants in the cryptocurrency market have recently begun debating Ethereum Gate, which alludes to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC, purportedly favoring the Ethereum Foundation. With XRP attorney John Deaton admitting that he has seen papers relating to the alleged wrongdoings, it is thought that these revelations are just the beginning of a lengthy, drawn-out exposure. The discussion around Ethereum Gate heated up when Stephen Nureyev, an early advisor at the Ethereum Foundation, said in a September 17, 2023, tweet that members at the foundation were concealing the true number of ETH purchasers during the cryptocurrency's 2014 initial coin offering, ISO. Previously, CoinDate revealed XRP lawyer John Deaton's disclosure that he has seen some of their seats that might reveal the truth about the ISO figure. While consenting to examine the data, the lawyer allegedly alluded to Ethereum when he said that he could not release the identities due to attorney-client privilege. This suggests Nureyev signed an engagement agreement with attorney Disha. This may imply Deaton defending the former ETH advisor in court if necessary. Another attorney, Fred Rispoli, explained that the attorney-client privilege might have far-reaching consequences. He cautioned that the collaboration might have far-reaching consequences, predicting very big things to come. Is Nureyev suing the Ethereum Foundation over the framing of fraud charges? Attorney Deaton is well known for his belief that the U.S. SEC backed Ethereum while making the Ripple project a scapegoat in its legal efforts. As a result, a lawsuit on Nureyev's behalf might be filed in the coming months. Blockchain, the breakthrough technology powering cryptocurrencies, has prepared the path for a decentralized financial environment. However, the absence of a defined regulatory framework has often been a cause of friction between blockchain enthusiasts and regulatory organizations. A recent skirmish in this continuing war was observed when Ripple's chief legal officer, Stuart Alderody, and XARP supporter, John E. Deaton, turned to social media to call out SEC chair Gary Gensler on his anti-crypto beliefs. Their claims followed Gensler's appearance on Bloomberg, in which he urged for the application of securities regulations to cryptocurrencies in order to avoid fraud and manipulation. The critique comes at an opportune moment, since the crypto sector, represented by companies like Ripple and Coinbase, has been aggressively pursuing regulatory clarification in the United States in order to stimulate innovation and investor protection. Alderodi emphasized Gensler's inconsistency, accusing him of ignoring court rulings and harming the drive for regulatory clarity. Dayton, on the other hand, expressed similar worries, underlining the necessity for investor protection against the sex's anti-crypto stance and hypocrisy. The debate goes beyond words. Deaton, who represents a sizable number of XRP investors, is a powerful voice in the crypto legal sphere. The issue sparked more discussion in the crypto community, with Stephen Nureyev, an early Ethereum advisor, remarking on the $19.02 trillion loss of U.S. family wealth during the housing crisis, which occurred under regulated institutions. He hints at irony by doubting the efficiency of legislation in protecting individuals against fraud and manipulation. Furthermore, Deaton plans to have Nureyev on crypto law to shed light on Ethereum's initial coin offering, IU poll, and potential SEC misconduct. In another layer of complication, federal courts have labeled the sex allegations in previous cases as arbitrary and capricious, with Judge Nepburn in the Ripple case labeling the sex conflicting stances as disingenuous. The continuous legal and public debate shows the maze of regulatory uncertainty ensnaring the crypto business. Despite these heated discussions, the basic problem remains unaffected. The critical need for a fair and transparent regulatory framework that supports innovation while protecting investor interests in the quickly growing blockchain field. Empower oversight whistleblowers as research. A rigorous watchdog organization has spearheaded another incisive Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, endeavor. This strategy is geared on clarifying Jay Clayton's interactions with a pantheon of parties considered crucial to the sex's often controversial Bitcoin enforcement approaches. Clayton's tenure as the sex's most powerful chair, which lasted from May 4, 2017 to December 23, 2020, included a number of landmark occurrences. At the forefront was Clayton's declaration of Bitcoin's non-security status, which was echoed by other tub figures about Ether. Bill Hyman delivered his notorious lecture in which he claimed that ETH is decentralized and so does not qualify as a security. Hyman's speech disregarded the advice of other authorities, as revealed in the legal dispute between Ripple and the SEC. These statements have a significant amplifying impact on the value dynamics of these digital assets. This rising trend, however, was disrupted by the SEC's unexpected legal onslaught against Ripple, which questioned the XRP token status as a security. This dispute, when paired with Clayton's later affiliation with One River Asset Management, a hedge fund with a sole portfolio emphasis on Bitcoin and Ether, fueled speculation. Among these swings, Empower Oversight's press release stated unequivocally, Empower Oversight has submitted a new Freedom of Information Act, AYA, request seeking communications between Jay Clayton regarding the agency's ostensible misalignment in cryptocurrency enforcement strategies. Empower Oversight tries to dramatically widen the nexus of persons possibly enmeshed inside Clayton's contact environment in the convoluted build of this newly minted FOIA petition, aimed at Raymond Macinerny, the sex's main FOIA custodian. The list, whose names range from Jasmine Burgess to John D'Agostino et al., attempts to crystallize any underlying conflicts of interest entwined within Mr. Clayton's sex stewardship. The whole issue has not gone ignored by cryptocurrency stakeholders. When I first raised the huge conflicts of interest, I was called a conspiracy theorist by many in the industry, said renowned Proxerp attorney Johnny Deaton via XEU. 
previously Twitter, Empower Oversight found emails demonstrating Hyman violated 18 UC 208 on many occasions with Clayton's full knowledge and implicit permission. Is Empower Oversight a conspiracy theorist as well? Let's not forget, Clayton was the only commissioner who saw and read the draft speech before it was delivered, Deaton said. Hinman did not send a copy to Hester Pierce. That's correct. Crypto. Mom was not informed about the most important speech in crypto history. Ripple is determined to win the legal fight with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. As a result, the corporation just engaged a well-known lawyer to assist in that aim. James K. Fila, a defense lawyer and former federal prosecutor, revealed on X Twitter that Rahul Muki would defend Ripple and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse in their current dispute with America's securities regulators regulator. Muki has extensive expertise in the area, having worked as an assistant United States attorney from 2010 until 2016. He eventually became a lawyer and partner at the multinational legal firm Cleary Gottlieb Steen Hamilton Legal Firm, Cleary Gottlieb Steen Hamilton LP. Muki has overseen major cases including financial and tax fraud, public corruption, cybercrime, money laundering, and organized crime during the last decade. The legal conflict began in December 2020, when the SEC filed a complaint alleging ripple of trading billions of dollars in XRP as a securities without registering with the commission. In the years that followed, the intense struggle progressed through many phases as both entities launched bullets at one another. However, Ripple seems to have a significant edge since, in July, a U.S. court found that most of its XR sales did not represent an offer of investment contract. In the continuing legal struggle between Ripple and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, John Deaton, a major XR supporter, has shed light on possible conflicts of interest and regulatory capture that may have impacted the sex's decision to launch legal action against Ripple. Ethereum is at the core of these claims. The elaborate tapestry known as ETH, Gate displays a complicated network of connections. The charges are complex and difficult to manage. Deaton summarized the most important elements in a recent tweet. Deaton draws attention to a series of incidents that link former SEC chairman Jay Clayton and SEC staffer William Hinman. On March 26, 2018, Lowell Ness, a lawyer for a 16s, reportedly handed a message and a safe harbor agreement to Hyman. The paper particularly mentioned F. Soon after, Hyman proclaimed F to be a non-security, despite the fact that he was not formally retired and was still profit, sharing partner with his law company, which was a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. According to Deaton, Hyman's law firm was a member of the EE, and Hyman was not retired, but rather a profit-sharing partner with his law firm when he declared eighth a non-security ten weeks later. Furthermore, Deaton claims an obvious conflict of interest with Clayton's legal firm representing Joseph Lubin, ETH's co-founder, and Consensys, a significant ETH holder and booster. Deaton points out another possible conflict. Clayton's firm also brokered the merger between Quorum and Consensys, using the Jeepin coin, a direct competitor to Ripple and XRP. The participation of Joe Grunfest complicates things even further. According to Deaton, Grunfest was an essential element of the aforementioned working group, and he had communications with Ethereum founders as early as 2014, 2015. Deaton quotes Grunfest as saying, he said XRP should not be treated any differently than ETH. Grunfest suspected the widespread evacuation of Clayton, Hyman, Berger, and others. He said there was no justification to file the complaint since XRP has traded openly for seven years, and that innocent people with no connection to Ripple would suffer the most. Despite the appeals, Clayton decided to sue Ripple on his way out of the SEC. Clayton soon joined One River, which had already put a $1 billion wager on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Returning to Hyman, Deaton notes that Hyman returned to his e-law firm $15 million richer after less than three years at the SEC and then later became partners at S16s with the same people who helped put that list together, asking for the safe harbor for F. Furthermore, Deaton doubts Hyman's compliance with directions, alleging that his own SEC emails prove Hyman ignored that instruction and violated 18 UC 2083 more times by meeting them. The allegations presented by Deaton are noteworthy, implying improper actions and relationships inside the SEC at the time of Ripple's lawsuit filing. As of the publication of this article, neither the SEC nor the parties implicated had issued any formal remarks in response to Denton's charges. With the second deadline for the U.S. SEC's spot Bitcoin at FED set for the third week of October 2023, the focus is now on other important events affecting the crypto market. On September 27, 2023, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler is expected to testify before the House Financial Services Committee on the agency's supervision. Members of the committee have a history of vehemently opposing Gensler's ideas, particularly on the crypto regulatory framework. In an April 2023 hearing, committee chairman Patrick McEntry questioned the commission chair if Ethereum e, was a security or a commodity. This might be a topic of discussion again at the forthcoming hearing in the context of the XRP lawsuit judgment, which classified token sales to regular customers as not securities. The Bureau of Economic Analysis is scheduled to issue the Personal Consumption Expenditures PESI, price index data for August on September 29, 2023. Ripple will hold the proper party in New York City on September 29, 2023. It will be a communal celebration of liberation from legal difficulties as a result of the recent partial success in the SEC litigation. While the event has no direct influence on XRP demand and supply, it may have an effect on market mood. Furthermore, it is likely that the corporation would make no major announcements during the event.